Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and we're going to take the next few minutes to take a look at the book module. Now, this video is going to cover the basic workflow from start to end. I'm not going to cover too much or go too much in depth on actually you know, manipulating the layouts and changing layouts, nor the advanced features, but I really want to make sure that we understand the workflow. So let's start here in the library module. And it's really up to you how much time you want to put into creating the collection of images and organizing them into kind of a storytelling order before you go to the book module. I prefer to do it in the library because I can see more images at a time and it just makes more sense to me, but we can always modify that, that order once we get over to the book module. The other thing that I did do before I went to the book module with this collection of images is I entered in captions for each one of the photographs into the metadata, and I just did that over here on the right-hand side. You can see if we go down to metadata, and I click on an image, we can see that it has a caption right here. So the nice thing about the book module is it will actually look for captions if I tell it to, and then apply those right underneath each one of the photographs. So we'll see that in just a moment. So let's take this collection and move to the book module. Now, I'm going to start on the right-hand side underneath the book settings. You can see here for book that we have two options. We can output to Blurb or to PDF. And we chose Blurb because recently they've made huge improvements in, in their binding and in their, their end papers as well as their paper quality. And all of the folks on the testing team really found it to be a positive experience. So let's look at what the options are as far as sizes go. There's five different sizes. We've got a small square book, which is 7 by 7, a standard portrait, which is 8 by 10, a standard landscape, which is 10 by 8, a large landscape, and a large square. And I actually have an example here of the standard landscape book that I created. And you can see that we can see those gray end papers there. And then we can go ahead and turn the page, and you can see this is the book that I laid out. And I'm very, very happy with the quality here. All right, let's take a look at some of the other options. For example, the cover. Now, mine was a hardcover book, but I could have also chosen a soft cover, or I could have chosen a hardcover with a dust jacket. And I think you know what that is. That's the, the paper wrap on top of a hardcover that folds into the inside of the book. In fact, you can get a good visual here at the top you'll see that this would be the front cover, and then this is the part that wraps around to the inside. And of course, we can put photographs, and we can put text in all of these different areas that are highlighting, and we can choose different templates. In fact, Lightroom is going to ship with over 180 templates. Now, today, those templates aren't going to be modifiable, but I've laid out now five different books, and I haven't felt extremely constrained by these templates because they are so varied. You know, I guess it's really just a trade-off, um, you know, the control versus the, the flexibility. So if you're a designer who's used to designing in a product like InDesign, then, then probably you would want to stay in InDesign, and, and maybe the book module wouldn't be for you because it doesn't have as much flexibility. But for me, it was really, really easy to use. And even though I know InDesign, I think it speaks volumes that I actually hadn't produced a book yet in InDesign, and yet as soon as the book module came to Lightroom, I've now gone ahead and published books of my own. Okay, so getting back to the book settings here, we can also choose our paper type. So there's a premium luster, a matte, an uncoated, and a pearl photo. And you can actually go on the Blurb website, and they will send you a little um, swatch kit that you can then take a look at each of these paper types. There's one paper type that we don't offer, and that is the standard paper type, just because I don't think it meets the quality um, that you're going to want as our customer. In addition, you can see that they'll send you the end papers that you can choose from, and then also some canvases. There's also an option for a logo page. I have that turned on because it actually reduces the price of the book, so I kind of like that feature. All right. Let's go now to the auto layout area. I could simply tell Lightroom to auto fill the book. And in fact, if we come over here and we go to book and we go to book preferences, 
you'll notice that I have an option to start new books by autofilling, which is a great option. Um, I have it turned off because I didn't want this book to autofill the second we got over here um, because I wanted to talk through all of these other options, but you can certainly turn that on. There's also an option for your default photo zoom. So if the aspect ratio of your photo doesn't meet the aspect ratio of the cell, you can choose to either zoom to fit, in which case there won't be any cropping, or you can choose to zoom to fill. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it zoom to fit. I'd rather see my whole image and then decide if I want to fill the cell by cropping my image on kind of a page by page basis. All right, there's also some text options here. I wanna fill the text boxes with my caption metadata, right? I went to all that work in the library module to add all my captions, so I would love to have the book module grab that information from the metadata and add the caption underneath every single image. I could also use the title metadata if I wanted to, or I could use filler text. Now, the thing with filler text is it actually puts a little bit of text in each one of your captions, and then you would go in and manually overwrite that caption and type in your own text. And so it is a good idea if you wanna be reminded where all of your captions are. Um, just as a side note, the little filler text that it does put in there, that text won't print. So if you accidentally forget that you haven't added a caption to a photo and it just has that filler text, it's pretty much like a guide and it, it you don't have to worry about it, it won't actually print. But I want the caption metadata and I'm gonna constrain my captions to text safe areas so that if I have a photo that bleeds, like it has a full bleed, it goes all the way top, bottom, left and right, I wanna make sure that the caption is inside the area that is title safe or text safe because when the book gets bound sometimes they trim the top and the bottom and the sides obviously and when they do those trims I want to make sure that my text doesn't accidentally get trimmed off. All right so those are the preferences. Now before I simply click auto layout I want to take a look at the presets and maybe modify one. So let's select edit auto layout preset and you'll notice that we've got left pages and right pages. Now I'm just gonna set my pages to be the same. So for example, I want photos on both sides of my pages. Not everyone wants that. So they might leave the left side blank so that you only have photos on the right hand side. For this book that I'm laying out, it's fine with me to have photos on each side. And the way that I laid out my book and my collection was I basically put two horizontals and two verticals next to each other. So I know that I'm gonna want two images per page. So here underneath the right hand side, I'm gonna put fixed layout, and then I'm gonna select two photos. And since the majority of my photos are actually vertical, I'm gonna pick one of these vertical templates like this one. Once I've got that selected, I can again choose to zoom my photos to fill or fit. I prefer the fill. If I choose fit, I have an option to match the long edges. If you choose to match long edges, what Lightroom will do is if you have an image that maybe you have a vertical image and a horizontal image on the same page, it's going to actually change the size of the larger image to match the smaller image. And it just kind of, it kind of makes the weight of the two images closer than if you have this huge horizontal and this little vertical or vice versa but I'm gonna turn that off and set my zoom back to fill. I wanna add the photo captions, I wanna align them with the photo, and I'm going to use a text style preset. Some text styles for captions as well as titles ship by default, but I've actually created my own and I did that just using the type options here, which we'll talk about in another video. But for now, I have edited my preset, so I could either save this as a new preset or update the preset that I have. I'm gonna to choose to update the preset and then click done. So now we are ready to have Lightroom do our auto layout, so we'll click that and you can see that Lightroom's making as many pages as it needs to and it's also laying out that book for me. So now let's take a minute and talk about how to view maybe a single page versus a double page spread versus this multi-page view. Well, in our toolbar, we have icons for all three of those views. So for example, if I wanted to view the spread of page two and page three, I just need to highlight that and then click here in order to zoom into that spread view. 
If I want to see a single page, I can click on the single page icon. And if I want to see the whole flow of the book, the multiple pages, I can click on the first icon. Of course, there are keyboard shortcuts for all of this, which I really think help navigate much more quickly. So I'll just point those out. They're all right next to each other. So Command or Control E shows you the entire book. Command R will go to a double page spread. And Command T will show you a single page. Once you're viewing a single page, you can then use your arrow keys to move from page to page. If I use Command R to go to the double page spread and I use my arrow keys, then I move from one spread to the next. And if I use Command E, that takes me back to view all of my multiple pages in my book. When I'm viewing multiple pages, I can use the plus key in order to increase my thumbnail size, or I can use the minus key to decrease my thumbnail size. And of course, if I tap the tab key, then my panels are hidden on the left and right hand side, which gives me a little bit larger area to view my images, especially if I wanted to start making changes. I might use the plus key in order to just zoom in a little bit in this view. All right, let's tap the tab key in order to bring back those panels. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit till we hit this first page that has two horizontal images. I just want to show you really quickly how easy it is to change a template for a page. There's a little disclosure triangle right here when I highlight the page. When I click on it, it shows me all of the different templates that I can choose from. So for example, here are all the templates for my one photo up on a page. And you can see that some of these um, templates have areas for text. Some of them have kind of this funky um, border on each of the images. Some of them have a full bleed. Some of them are off-centered, left or right. There's, like I said, 180 different templates to choose from. If you want to move to two photos per page, here are all your options there. We've got three photos per page and four photos per page. And obviously, they get more and more complex as you add more photos. In fact, we even have a multiple photos. And look at all the photos. You can make a nice grid and put a ton of images on a single page. So if I would just want to change this so that the two photographs aren't sitting next to each other, but instead are stacked on top of each other, I'll just click on two photos and then click the template I want and Lightroom will automatically change that for me. You might also notice that if I double click on a page, my captions all came over as well. Again, that was work that I did up front. All right, let's view all of the images. Now, I'm not going to go into how we can manipulate these layouts right now. What I want to do is kind of jump ahead so that we complete the whole workflow by just imagining that we are actually finished at this point and we want to save this book. So up at the top, you'll notice that this is an unsaved book right now. So I need to come over to the right-hand side and create a saved book. This is the exact same thing as if I use the plus icon on my collection area and create a book. We'll go ahead and name this. We'll call this Venice Demo Book. And I can save this either as a top level on my collection or inside another collection. And I'll go ahead and choose Create. You can see in my collection area, I have a new icon here, and this is the icon for my book projects. You'll notice that in Lightroom 4, when you work with the output modules, we're working a little bit differently in that we're going to ask you to save your specific projects that you create. And the nice thing about that is, like for example, if I go to the library module now and I'm working on maybe a different folder full of images and, and I've moved to a different project, when I come back, to this Venice demo book, you'll notice that I can click on it and it'll show me all the pictures that are in that collection or in that book. But also, I can click on the little arrow icon and it will open up that book. So from now on, no matter what I do in this book, it will automatically be saved. Every change that I make is a part of this book. So then as the last step, if this book is complete and we're happy with it, I can choose to either export the book to PDF or I can send the book to Blurb. And even though I'm going to send this book ultimately to Blurb, it is kind of nice to have the option to create a PDF file because then I can just print that out and kind of use it as a proof and go through it and make sure that I've got everything right and maybe step away for it from a day and then come back to it. So for me, it's a great way to proof the book, but ultimately my goal would be to send the book to Blurb. That wraps up the workflow segment of the book module. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.